Bitcoin has 36 hours to make a decisive move here and I'm going to show you in which direction this move might potentially go here and I'm also going to show you specific levels if it turns out to be different. So you should definitely stick around here that day before Christmas and watch that episode that potentially we get a nice Christmas present tomorrow from the market. So make sure that you're subscribed to the channel, like this video and also activate the bell so that you will never miss out on these really important updates. Even if it's a day before Christmas, I'm still putting out content for you guys and also tomorrow through uh, the holidays. So definitely make sure that you have your notifications on. And now let me show you what I actually found here. So when we are looking at the funding rates for Bitcoin, I must say earlier when I left, the funding rates were looking a little bit more bearish. And now we can see that they are kind of neutral uh, through the different uh, exchanges here, which is something that I really like to see here for the time being and also gives more fuel to my thesis uh, for that potential move that I expect. So for this, I go here first to the Bit Bitcoin CME chart. We might get a small CME gap from the Friday's close compared to the price where we are at right now. We are around $33,550. So we would have a small CME gap because we closed on Friday on $43,805. So a little bit higher than where we are at right now. And if we would um, yeah, get that CME gap, I think it will be really quickly filled by tomorrow already. And then we move higher all the way up to $44,850 because here with this move, we did not fully close that seam E gap. So there's like uh, a $200, $150 spread still in there. And this is for seam E gap still too big. So normally that gets filled. If it would be $50, $20, I would consider uh, the seam E gap to be filled, but it's over $150. So I still expect that we go all the way up to fill this in the next coming days here on the CME chart. And of course, that will also then move the price on spot market higher uh, by potentially already tomorrow evening. There's also a scenario where we get no CME gap. We come back to $43,800 and then just move from there to the upside. When we're looking then uh, here on um, the one hourly chart, here, what I want to show you is first of all that we are still keeping this kind of new range that we formed here. If I draw here two lines, see we have here kind of uh, a new range for the time being. Uh, the range would be broken above $44,200. Uh, then we will definitely uh, continue higher. If we break the lower end of that range at 43300 then we most likely go back to the golden ratio for a final retest. That would be also a small flush um, when it comes to the funding. And then it will, yeah, and then we just move higher from there. Both scenarios are fine for me. Uh, and we can also, of course, trade both scenar scenarios. So, but here's something else I wanted to show you. You see, I have here the Fibonacci levels uh, pulled from um, the last high to um, the bottom here. So, and now if I do the same from the recent one, what do we get here when we are taking a closer look? If you look closely, what, what, do, you, what do you see? I see here multiple rejections of that 0 0.618, 0 0.618, uh, 0 0.65, 0 0.618 golden pocket golden ratio here of 44,047 to $44,083. This is right now our imminent resistance that is holding us back from moving higher. So we can draw in here small resistance block. And once that is broken, we will then um, move into higher prices, in my opinion. And here on the Fibonacci extensions, the next Fibonacci extension level would be $45,208. We would have then broken already all the other resistance levels beneath us that I was speaking about yesterday, like $44,600, $44,800. And from there, I don't see us not continuing to push to $48,000. And that is definitely on my radar. So I actually got the idea this morning to look at it that way and found then all this confluence here from these uh, prior um, highs that we made here and all these prior rejections that this is a level that we have to watch. And if you want to long Bitcoin, then you can either do this if we get a retest here at $43,300 in the golden range, or if we are breaking here this 
resistance level of forty-four thousand and fifty dollars. But wait for a 50, 15 or thirty minute close. Don't do it beforehand. Uh, when we are going to the thirty minutes chart, here I want that you understand that also the weekend trap did not play out as it usually does last week where we get a false move, for example, uh, to the upside. And then we start ranging like this over the weekend. And then we actually go lower. So we did not get it like this. We got it the, the other way around. So but this weekend, I believe with this small sell off here before uh, on Friday and also here at the end of Friday where we moved lower, that short sellers are trapped now in this range. Because look at this, that's a really narrow range. And everybody that went, let's say, short from here is now trapped in this range because the Bitcoin price is not going anywhere. It's not moving really up. It's not moving really down. And if you are in there with like 25x leverage, you barely see any movement and it only costs you funding fees. So what I expect here by tomorrow night, potentially Monday early morning, is that we come out of that range here and continue to move upwards because that would liquidate everybody that went short and will send Bitcoin then also, of course, uh, higher. Here on the four hourly chart, uh, another crucial level that we have to watch here on the VPVR, which is also coinciding with the resistance of our bull flag is the, here again, the $44,000 level. That is here the last longest bar before we have basically nothing holding us back anymore to move into higher levels. And there you see again how important it is to watch at confluence across multiple time frames where the same levels pop up over and over again, no matter on what time frame you're you're looking at the chart. So and this is here definitely the case. Here, if we would get the break to the upside out of that bull flag formation, then the target again would be above $46,500. That also means we would hit uh, the short term uh, Fibonacci extension level of $45,200. Oh, sorry, it's a little bit lower. It's like, yeah, halfway through it. And that might be the only resistance that we get on the way up to our technical target. But um, I, I believe uh, that will be not holding us um, up a lot to actually move here to the price target of that bull flag and then also hit the target for that W formation that we have all the way down here. Also on the EMA ribbon, when we're looking at it, price action is sitting above it. That's bullish for the time being. This will only change if we see this break in the price action breaking into the EMA ribbon. Uh, then we have maybe to get a little bit more cautious if that is going on for like 12, 16 hours, something like this. And we come close to like $43,000 to the dollar then we, ha we have to get a little bit cautious, but until then, um, everything is looking fine in, in my opinion here. When we're looking at liquidation levels, uh, here uh, we cleaned some liquidation, uh, long liquidations, but not a lot. Uh, here again, like I said, I expect a move by tomorrow here to the upside to clean everything up here in short liquidations. And also when we're looking here at uh, the heat map, we still clearly see that the highest or the biggest level here above us is at $44,688 approximately. $163 million in short uh, positions would be liquidated there. Underneath is $85 million more or less, then again $100 million. So you see there is, there is again a lot of liquidity stacked up here, maybe four five hundred million all the way up to like $45,000. And to $43,000, there is, oh wow, there's a lot of long liquidations, more than shorts this time. Okay, so based on the liquidation levels, there could be a small flush be coming before we move higher, but I believe that that flush will be happening before the traditional markets open tomorrow. Because I believe when the tra traditional markets opening tomorrow, are they actually open tomorrow? I'm not sure. I think they are open tomorrow. I'm not sure. I have to look it up later. I'm not sure, guys. But if they're open tomorrow, then um, Bitcoin will get definitely sent higher. If not, if I'm mistaken here and they're not opening tomorrow and they're opening on Tuesday again, then we could definitely see that flush here and also stick 
a little bit down in that range here of $43,000 before then on Tuesday we get sent up again. So we have to keep in mind uh, the holidays also on the traditional markets. Here on the 12 hourly chart here nothing has changed. Break $44,300 and Bitcoin gets sent to the upside um, as long as we are also holding this dotted upward sloping a trend line that we see here lose the trend line lose the horizontal uh, level beneath us at forty three thousand two hundred dollars then we move a little bit lower to potentially um worst case like forty two thousand dollars in my opinion and then we get sent up again that will be also a level where i would open a really big long position if we would get it for the two thousand two hundred dollars and guys don't forget, if you want to trade anywhere, do it on Bybit. You still get $30,000 absolutely for free. And also a Bybit debit card is something that you can order. I got mine yesterday. I already used it. I love it. Uh, so if you're looking for a crypto debit card, a free debit card on top of that, it's absolutely for free, then go to Bybit and also claim your $30,000 bonus, but only with that specific link here. Also on BitGet, you still get a $30,000 with my specific link. And on CoinW, you can trade if you're looking for a platform without KYC and that you can use without a VPN, plus that you uh, get directly a $5 bonus just for signing up with my specific link. And also on Fairdesk, Fairdesk is right now the platform where I copy trades. So if you want to follow my trades and basically make money while you sleep, then this is the place where you want to have an account and you will get uh, the highest bonus in the industry of $120, but only if you um, sign up with my specific link here in the description below or in the pinned comment below. I think I had one, yeah, so yeah, the weekly chart is the last one that I've left. Now we moved a little bit higher again we had $43,620 so slightly above the resistance area on the weekly chart and if we can close the weekly candle as it is uh, then also here nothing stops us from going into the next resistance level um, over the next week to like $48,000 potentially even $50,000 into that golden ratio here um, on the weekly chart so that would be a nice um, Christmas post Christmas pre new year's gift in my opinion um, and i think we might actually get lucky there i also want to touch really quick on ethereum here the same thing we can see that ethereum here based on the fibonacci extension levels got for now rejected of the 0.65 0.618 at 2296 2305 dollars respectively uh, but now ethereum makes another attempt to test that level if we can flip it by today, then we'll definitely go higher, potentially $2,400. I expect there again um, a small stall for the price with some consolidation before we move higher. And that comes from that wick here um, where we were actually at that level uh, two weeks ago. Yeah, on that, yeah, it was two weeks on a, uh, on a Saturday where we hit that level. So this will still give us some resistance before we break through that. Um, and that's why I believe that we would get some consolidation beneath it or just um, playing jumping rope with that level before we convincingly break it and then continue uh, into the extended golden ratio here at around $2,600. Also here on the VPVR, basically see if we are claiming the golden ratio, we are entering into that void here on the VPVR uh, and that's why you see these fast moves here with uh, so many wicks up here because we did not trade a lot in that area here on the VPVR um, and that could also lead to that we see today another pop here to the upside. The stochastic RSI is still coming down a little bit but in 10 minutes uh, when this four hourly candle is closing we get really close to the bottom range, uh, range of the VPVR. Uh, so we could see in the next eight hours here a turnaround and the Ethereum price um, claiming the golden ratio and then continue to move higher here into the next and last uh, resistance that is holding us back to move above $2,400 at $2,352. Uh, there is not much um, more to say for today, guys. I hope you will have uh, some lovely uh, Christmas days with your family. Uh, like I said, I will be back tomorrow. Um, enjoy your Christmas if you're not watching and then I am gonna see you in the next one don't forget smash up the like button hit the subscribe button hit the notification bell and drink one for me